Hi friends, and welcome to Live from the City Opera House, it's story time, brought to you by the historic City Opera House in beautiful downtown Traverse City. I'm your host, Ben Whiting, and on each episode of this show, we're going to have a great story read by a special guest and then have a fun activity that you can participate in from your home or classroom, using objects that you should be able to find in your home or classroom. The theme of the activity will be based on the book and could be in the area of science, technology, engineering, arts, mathematics, or even local culture. Now, the theme for today's episode is heroes. Now, when I say the word hero, who do you think of? Maybe you think of your mom and dad, or maybe you think of a firefighter running into a burning building, or police officer headed to the scene of a crime, or maybe you can look right out your window and see an electric man climbing up a pole to restore power after a storm. The reality is, is we can find heroes all over the place when we start looking for them. And in today's show, we're going to be talking about heroes and helpers within our community and how they've helped us in the past, present, and into the future. But we're going to be focusing on one very particular kind of hero today. That is the doctors, nurses, and medical workers that keep us safe within our community. You see, the definition of a hero is someone that we admire because of their courage and achievements despite danger and obstacles in what they're trying to achieve. And I think we can all agree that the actions doctors, nurses, and medical workers have taken these past couple of years is without a doubt heroic. Now, for today's activity, we are going to be making our very own stethoscope. And to do that, you're gonna need a couple of objects. First, you'll need some duct tape, scissors, a funnel, a cardboard tube, and tape, and a stopwatch or clock. Now, if you don't have these objects handy, that's okay. Go ahead and watch today's episode as our activity leader guides us through our project. And then you can watch it again later when you have the objects at hand. Now, on to today's book. And our special guest today is Dr. Christine Nefsi. Dr. Nefsi is the chief medical officer for Munson Healthcare, the biggest healthcare provider in our region, including nine different hospitals. And not only is Dr. Nefsi a doctor, but she's a pediatrician, which means she specializes in helping kids just like you. And today she's going to be reading the book, Community Helpers, Then and Now. And with that, Dr. Nefsi, take it away. I'm Dr. Christine Nefsi, and today we're reading Community Helpers Then and Now, written by Bobby Coleman. This book is being read with permission from Crabtree Publishing Company. Let's go ahead and get started. Community Helpers. A community is a place where many people live and work together and share buildings, services, and laws. Community helpers are people who make communities cleaner, safer, and better. Name some community helpers that you see below. You can see lots of people down there. Community helpers long ago. In the past, there were not as many kinds of community helpers as there are today. Some helpers, such as store owners, supplied people with important things that they needed. Some drove wagons. Community helpers called trades workers were very important because they made things that people needed trades workers long ago. Before there were machines, trades workers made everything by hand using simple tools. Carpenters, wheelwrights, harness makers, and blacksmiths were some trade workers in old communities. Trades workers today. Trade workers today are still important community helpers, but what they make and how they do it may be very different from how trades workers did it long ago. In the past, for example, wagon repair workers fixed wagons, and today, mechanics fix cars. Trades workers today still use some simple tools, but they also use new kinds of machines to do their work. Construction workers. Construction workers are trades workers who build homes, offices, schools, hospitals, and many other buildings. They also build roads and bridges. They use many kinds of tools and machines like power drills, cranes, bulldozers, and cement trucks. 
long ago, there were very few machines, so builders used simple tools such as hammers, saws, and axes. It took a long time to construct a building. After machines were invented, tall buildings could be built quickly. My grandfather built buildings. He was called a cement mason, so he would put all the cement together that would build bricks and other parts of buildings. School helpers. Many of the people who work at your school are teachers, but some school workers help you in other ways. The principal is the head of the school, and the librarian shows you how to find the books you need. Long ago, many schools had only one room and one teacher. Not only did teachers plan lessons and teach their students, they also had to keep the school clean. Students helped them sweep the floor, wash the blackboard, and bring in water from the well. The parents of the students paid the teacher's salary. I bet you're glad you don't have to get water from the well today. Food and farm workers. Next to air and water, food is the most important thing we need to stay alive. Agricultural workers or farmers grow the food we eat. The farmer sends some of the food to factories where it can be made into different kinds of foods. The foods are then sold in supermarkets. Many people help get food from farms to our tables. Who are these helpers? Farming long ago. In the past, most people got their food from gardens they planted next to their homes. People also raised chickens, pigs, and one or two horses and cows. Some farmers had large fields where they grew corn or wheat. Farm helpers were often family members, like the children above, collecting pumpkins. Some of you probably have gardens at your home, too. Medical helpers. Medical helpers are nurses, dentists, and many kinds of doctors who treat different body parts, such as eyes or teeth. I'm a pediatrician, which is a doctor for children. The pharmacist at your drugstore is another important helper because he or she gives you the medicine you need to get well. In the old days, the same doctor that treated your illness also looked after your teeth and your eyes. He or she often traveled from one small community to another to help sick people. In those days, people didn't know that germs caused many diseases. In fact, people thought that taking too many baths could make you sick. Doctors often passed along diseases because they didn't wash their hands or the instruments or tools they used. So just like things have changed a lot for tradesmen, things have changed a lot in medicine and healthcare too. We always wash our hands and we don't just take care of people who are sick. We help keep people well too by teaching them things like how to wash your hands, how to avoid germs, or even giving vaccinations that help you from getting sick. First responders. First responders are emergency workers who are the first to respond or act in an emergency. And an emergency is a dangerous situation that happens suddenly. First responders include police officers, ambulance drivers, paramedics, and firefighters. In emergencies, 911 operators receive calls from people who need help and then send emergency workers to where they are needed. You all probably all know how to call 911 in an emergency. In olden times, there were no telephones or emergency numbers to call. There were no first responders either. When there was an emergency, people helped one another. In big cities, there were hospitals, but their ambulances were pulled by horses. Firefighters. Fires can start quickly. Firefighters help fight fires and rescue people and animals. They put out fires that start in buildings. They also fight forest and bush fires. Firefighters today drive big trucks and use water from fire hydrants to put out fires. Fire hydrants can be found in many places around towns and cities. Long ago, people used candles for light and fireplaces for cooking and heating homes. Often, flames made accidental fires very common. In those days, there were no fire trucks or firefighters, so buckets of water were passed along lines of people to put out the flames of a fire. After cars were invented, firefighters drove fire trucks with pumps, which sprayed water on fires. 
police officers. Police officers protect people in towns and cities. They patrol and drive regularly through neighborhoods as well as along highways to watch for people who are breaking the law. They also, like doctors, help people who need help. And that is the end of our book. So we learned about lots of different jobs today uh, where you can help people. And you might know somebody in your neighborhood or in your family that does some of these jobs. So if one of those jobs is interesting to you, you should ask your neighbor or your friend and learn more about it because helping people is a great way to support your community and a great way to have a career. Thank you so much, Dr. Nefsi. Now, before we take what we read and put it into action with today's activity, it's time for today's moment of mindfulness. So, move around a little bit, take a deep breath, and quiet your mind as we prepare for a little bit more learning. Hello, everyone. Today, we are going to be talking about communication, one of the most important elements of our martial arts and our society. Let's get started. Chariot, which means attention. Feet together, hands at your side, shoulders back, chin up. Kinye, we bend at the waist and keep our eyes down. I keep my eyes down as a demonstration of respect to you. If I bow like this, that's a challenge. So when we bow and we're saying hello, we keep our eyes down. It's our way of saying, I trust you and I will not fight you. All right, communication is the link between the world and me. It's extremely important. And one way that we can demonstrate black belt communication, as well as respect, is by saying, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. These are wonderful ways of addressing each other with courtesy and respect. So what I want you to do is take your right foot, bring it forward, bend your front knee, and keep your back leg straight like this. Bent, straight. I know, it's a crazy one. This is called a front stance. And when I say haya, you're gonna do your palm heel. A palm heel is an open palm forward just like a punch, just like that. Now, I know I can't hear you, but I'm gonna trust that you're doing this. So when I say set, you're gonna say, yes, ma'am. All right, and set, yes, ma'am. All right, now I'm gonna go high up, and you're gonna step forward, boom, gathering all your energy. Get ready, are you ready? Say, yes, ma'am. All right, here we go. When I say haya, you're gonna palm heel forward. Ready? Haya, haya. Excellent job. Now I say set. Remember what you say? Yes, ma'am. That's right. Good job. All right, here we go. Last one, best one. Finishing strong. Stepping forward. Bent knee. Straight knee. Gather all your energy and haya. Here we go. Finish strong. Set. Yes, ma'am. Well done, everyone. Now I want to challenge you to do this all around to your teachers, to your parents. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. And it's going to be an amazing foundation for communicating to the world around you. Well done, everyone. Chariot, put your feet together, hands at your side, shoulders back, chin up. Kenye, bend at the waist, ATA. And now it's time for today's activity. To help us out today, we have Mr. Peter Milne. He's the director of RIMC2 with Northwest Education Services. In his role, he provides books, technology, and STEM kits for teachers and students. Mr. Milne, how about you introduce yourself and get us started with today's activity. Greetings, everybody. My name is Peter Milne. I am the director of REMC2 Central at 
Northwest Education Services. And today I brought along a couple of friends, Patrick and Lorelai. We are gonna be talking to you today about some of the local heroes we have in Traverse City. The story from earlier talked about heroes and we are gonna specifically focus on doctors and nurses. Uh, the science experiment that we're gonna do today is to create a tool that doctors and nurses use to help keep, keep us healthy. And we're gonna start off with this right here. Patrick or Lorelei, do either of you know what this is? A stethoscope? It is a stethoscope. And do you know what it's used for? Uh, for measuring heart rate. Measuring heart rate, yeah. So the doctors and nurses put these in their ear and put this up against your chest to listen closely to those sounds inside of your body to make sure that everything's working the way that it's supposed to work. And what we're gonna focus on today is specifically our heart. And the heart is a giant muscle, just like all the other muscles in your body. The nice thing about the heart though, is that the heart is what we consider an involuntary muscle, which means that it, you don't have to tell the heart what to do. Like if you put your hand out right now and you think to yourself, close my fingers. Your brain just sent a message to your hand to open and close. And as much as you want to, you could sit here and think, heartbeat faster, heartbeat slower. And you could think really, really hard about it. And it's not going to do anything because your heart works whether you want it to or not. And we are going to do an experiment where we are going to measure our heart rate. And to make an at-home stethoscope is really pretty easy. You only need a couple of tools and there are things for the most part that you can easily find around the house. We are gonna need one of our cardboard tubes. And we're gonna need a funnel. Laura Live, you can grab us one of those funnels over there. We need some duct tape and just some scissors to cut the duct tape. So if each of you want to grab a funnel and a cardboard tube, I'm going to get this piece out of the way. What you want to do is take first your cardboard tube and set it on that thinner end of your funnel. And then you might need to work together on this part, help each other out. You're going to take the duct tape and we're going to adhere it to the cardboard tube. We're going to want to wrap it around. And when you do that, make sure that you smooth it down. Why would we want to make sure that it's smooth? Uh, so then it doesn't like start wobbling all over the place. It's not going to wobble around. So there aren't any like holes or yeah. gaps? Yep. We don't want any spaces for air to get through. So you guys can go ahead and do that. Uh, do you want to yeah. Yeah. first tape? Yeah, you want strong tape. I brought some duct tape. If you have other stronger tape at home, you can use that as well. Laurel, I can cut that and then you can smooth it. So before we go ahead and use these, let's talk about the stethoscope again for a second. So the stethoscope on one end has this flat circular disc and this disc is what we're going to place against your body. And that disc is where it, the sound is gonna be picked up and it travels up the tube and then to the two ear pieces at the top. So if you take a look at the stethoscopes that we just made, which part are you guessing that we are going to put up against your chest? This part right here. Good. And then where is that other end going to go? Against your ear. Against your ear. Good. All right. So who wants to be the first one to measure their partner's heart rate? Okay. Okay. So you want to make sure that you put the funnel flat against his chest, and you want to put it more on the left side of his body because your heart's located a little bit me? more to the left. There we go. And we're going to measure for 10 seconds. Right, ready, set, go. Stop. All right, can you go ahead and write his number down? Yes. You got some paper. And what'd you come up with? 11. 11. Okay. Patrick, you can measure lower line. Ready? Set. Go. And stop. Write that number down. What 
do you two know about your heart? What can you tell me about your heart? Uh, it helps, like, pump blood into your body. Help pump blood through your body. Anything else, Laura? Um, the more you move around, the faster your heartbeat will get. So your heart, like we were talking about earlier, is a muscle. The job of the heart is to send all the nutrients that you need throughout your body, your oxygen, uh, the food that you need, and it also gets waste out of your body. So like Lorelai was just talking about, the heart rate changes from time to time. And we're going to test right now what happens if we do a little bit of exercise. So we had our heart rates earlier, and you're guessing what's going to happen to the I'm heart rate? I guess it's going to speed up. It's going to speed up, okay. Let's do one more thing, though, before we move on with that. We only did that for 10 seconds, and we really want to know how much the heart beat in a, in a minute. What are we going to do to those two times multiplied by six, because there's 60 seconds. One minute. And then who is going to be our first exerciser? And then we're going to do one minute, and as soon as we're done with that one minute, you're going to sit down, and Lorelai is going to measure your heart rate again. Just do some jumping jacks for a minute. You ready? Go. Blood pumping. Watch out, don't go too much farther back. And while he's doing that, I'll keep talking. We go to see doctors to, and nurses to make sure that we are good and healthy, and having a healthy heart is one thing that we can do to make sure that we keep our health up. Almost there. Almost done. Five seconds. Stop. Right, sit down. Lorelei, get him ready. Set. Go. And then we're going to have Lorelei exercise. Ready? Yeah. Go. Just that scope ready so when she's done, you're ready to go. those numbers again? Uh, times. Times by six. Times by six. So let's take a look at those numbers for a minute. For our resting heart rates, we came up with what in a minute? 66 and 60. 66 and 60. And Patrick, for lower lies, our numbers uh, were? 66 and 48. 66 and 48. Good. And then what did we find out after exercising? What are those numbers? 126. Uh, 90. 126 and 90. Why? Are those numbers higher? Uh, because when you're moving and your heart starts pumping faster, that means like more beats per minute. Per, like minute. Good. The, the more physical activities you do, the higher, the faster your heart pumps. Yeah. If you remember, your heart is a pump and it's pumping things to do your body that you need, like oxygen. So when you start exercising, your body needs more oxygen because you're working hard. The more you exercise, the less your heart has to work harder. 
And that's one of those reasons why when we go and we see the doctor and they're checking our heart rate, they're checking to make sure that we have a healthy heart. That's our experiment for today. Again, super easy to make a stethoscope at home. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed it. Great work, everyone. Well, that is it for today's episode of Live from the City Opera House. It's story time. We hope you'll tune in next time. And remember, you can watch future and past episodes at tcaps247.com on your local PBS station and at michiganlearning.org. Thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, this is your host, Ben Whiting, saying stay safe, have fun, and keep learning. Take care. This program is made possible in part by the Michigan Department of Education, the State of Michigan, Forefront Credit Union, the Schmidt Community Fund, the Les and Ann Biederman Foundation, the Olson Foundation, and viewers like you.